Hey, I'm Dave, and today I'm going to present Bean There, Done That, a mathematical model of bean sculptures. So, Chicago. When you think of Chicago, you obviously think of the bean first. It's a sculpture by Anish Kapoor, which lives in Millennium Park, and it's obviously the thing that puts Chicago on the map. When you look at Google's Ngram viewer, which shows interest in a term in literature over time, you can see that when the bean is constructed, interest in Millennium Park just skyrockets. It's obviously because of the bean's construction. There's nothing else that could have influenced that. Now, why would a city want a bean like this? After Chicago, New York commissioned their own bean. And actually, Ottawa, the capital of Canada, has had their own variant of a bean since the 1960s. For more on that, we'll take you to Melitza, our frontline bean correspondent. Thanks, Dave. So we're here coming to you live from Ottawa, Ontario, home of the sphere. But it's recently experienced a resurgence in popularity since it's been rebranded as the Ottawa bean. Even on a day like today, we have some locals out here coming to enjoy the bean firsthand. So you're here today to see the bean. I drove 35 minutes to be here. I hope it's worth it for you. Uh, <laughs> I love the bean, especially in Ottawa. I find all of the art too sharp and not reflective enough. I can't see myself in it at all. It's a very common sentiment. There's just not enough spheres, not enough lumps, and not enough mirrors. I wish there were more round sculptures. Some people are really hopeful that this Ottawa bean could do a lot to invigorate Ottawa tourism and to help this neighborhood really grow into a more vibrant place. Do you think those are reasonable expectations for the bean? When I look into the bean, there it becomes two of me. So I've effectively doubled the amount of tourists seeing the bean. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us and please enjoy the bean. Here actually we have a tour bus carrying passengers to come see the bean. Other locals are more skeptical about the bean. Can you elaborate on your critiques of this piece of work? That's a bean to you? It's not even that spherical. Like, look at it, it's got bumps. You'd actually prefer it if the sphere were more smooth and more reflective. Yeah, I mean, with today's technology. Do you think similar works, but with more exotic shapes, would have a place in the local public art scene? Um, <laughs> They're coming! <laughs> There's a hater loose! <laughs> I gotta go! locals vary, but even the Bean's deepest critics agree that with Ottawa tourism in the sad state it's in, an injection of beans can only help. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Melita. So for another point of comparison, let's look at some numbers. We're going to compare Cloudgate, which is the nerd name for Chicago's Bean, with Parliament in Ottawa. So if we look at the number of annual visitors, Parliament gets 3 million annually, and Cloudgate gets 5 million. And if you look at the cost, well, Parliament, just restoration alone in the center block is four and a half billion dollars, and Cloudgate just took a mere 23 million to construct. So we crunched the numbers for you, and five million over three million, that's a number bigger than one. And 23 million over 4.5 billion, that's a number less than one. It is a financially responsible decision to replace Parliament with a bean. So I think it's safe to conclude that the bean sculpture single-handedly put Chicago on the map. So naturally, every city is gonna want one because the numbers don't lie. So that brings us to our research questions. Firstly, how do we mathematically describe the space of all these bean sculptures? And then how do we help every city find their own unique bean? Let's go over our method. So our base bean building block is a Bezier curve. We're using a quadratic Bezier curve, so it's got three control points, one on each end and one in the middle. Normally you can drag this anywhere, but we're constraining it to the middle for maximum beaniness. Using this, we can do Chicago's bean and Ottawa's bean pretty easily. Ottawa's bean is just the trivial bean where all the control points are zero. However, we want to be turning all these other landmarks into beans. We want to give the beans the maximum possible impact. That means putting them in significant places, and the easiest way to do that is just replace something that's already there. Unfortunately, a single curve just won't do for any of these. So our plan is going to be to combine multiple base beans to make one composite bean. But we don't want it to look like it's just a few noodles on top of each other. We still want it to look like it's one cohesive bean. So how do we make it smooth? For that, we're going to use something called sine distance functions. They're math. So what they do is they let you put in any point in space, and it gives you the distance to the surface of the shape. Rather than describing the surface directly, it gives you this distance, and then you can work out where the surface is. Now, it's a signed distance because it's positive when you're outside of the shape and negative when you're inside. Here's a graph of the distance to the center of the canvas, where red means it's a bigger distance. And when we start to subtract a radius from it, we can see it gets blue in the middle because it gets negative. And if you're gonna visualize exactly where it's zero, you get this circle. We're looking at the sine distance function for a circle. Now, if we wanna get the union of multiple circles, we can just take the minimum distance between either of the two circles. 
Uh, but if we visualize the zero line, it's a butt. We don't want a butt, we want a beam. So to do that, we're gonna use a smooth union. Now, when they get close to each other here, they just like smush into each other. That's a beam. And we're given this parameter K to control how smooth it is. Mmm, delicious. We can use this on base beams in addition to circles, and it will smush them together all the same. Here's what it looks like in 3D. Here's no smoothing, that's just noodles on top of each other. But when you start to increase K, ooh, that's a beam. So that's what we can build beams out of, but now the question is, what beam do we build? Given a target shape, we're going to use something called Markov Chain Monte Carlo Optimization to figure out the beam parameters that fit it best. This is a gradient-free optimization method because we have an integer number of base beam components. There's commercial solvers that can do this kind of thing, but do you want to fund us? Please. So instead, we're going to use this probabilistic approach. Now the way it works is you create a reference beam with some random starting parameters, and then you mutate them a little bit to make a proposal. Now if that proposal is better than the reference, you can just keep it as your new reference. But if it's worse, you probably don't keep it, but you randomly might still keep it. The idea being, you want to move towards the better result, but you also don't want to like hyper-optimize on what's only a local maximum, when there could be a global maximum elsewhere that you want to explore. So you go back to step two and repeat this process basically until you've run out of patience, and in the very end, you just take the best thing you've seen so far. Just to clarify what better means here, we're talking about comparing the opaque pixels between a landmark and a beam. We're going to use something called the intersection over union, which means we're going to try to maximize the intersection between them, which is the black pixels here. We want as many of those as possible. And we're going to try to minimize the union, which is all the pixels. So we basically just want black pixels if possible, while still being a bean. Here's what it looks like in action. We can puff out the input to make it a little bit easier to find a beany bean. And in the middle, we've got all the proposals being checked. And on the right, we've got the best thing we've seen so far. At the bottom, we can see the bean in glorious 3D. Oh, see that? I spent a lot of time looking at this. So how does it do? Here's Parliament as you know it. Here's Parliament as a bean. Here's Maman, a spider sculpture by Louise Bourgeois in front of the National Gallery. Here's Maman as a bean. Here's the most iconic thing in Toronto's skyline, but I would say that this is better. Here's Michelangelo's David, and here's the bean version, which is somehow more phallic despite the original being a naked man. Here's one that's dusty and in need of an upgrade. Fixed. There's really no limit to what you can do with this technique. Thank you so much for your time.